Star Wars, one of the most iconic and globally well-known franchises in history. But despite its popularity, it has seen some fairly mixed reactions to its theatrical releases. So which one will rise to the top, and which one will seek revenge for being placed at the bottom? Time to find out. <laughs> Hello ladies and gentlemen and movie lovers of all kind and welcome back to the channel. As always, I am your host Brett Murphy and for today's video we are going to be ranking all 12 Star Wars movies from worst to best. Now I know what you're probably thinking, Brett are you losing your mind? There's only 11 Star Wars movies, there's the 9 from the Skywalker Saga and the 2 A Star Wars Story movies, but but but. I will also be including the Clone Wars animated movie which came out back in 2008 because it was theatrically released. I also won't be talking about the Star Wars Christmas special or the 2 made for TV Ewok movies because uh... Ugh. You know exactly why. The Clone Wars animated movie, which of course was the precursor to the incredibly popular Clone Wars TV series. I am excitedly nervous to get into this one. I'm mostly interested to see what a lot of your reactions are because... Yeah, I know a lot of you are not going to agree with me on some of these. Regardless though, that's all part of the fun. So, without further ado, let's hop right into things. 12. The Clone Wars this one ends up at the bottom for obvious reasons. It's not particularly awful or anything, but it's just sort of a nothing movie. It's instantly forgettable and greatly overshadowed by the phenomenal TV show that followed. The worst reviewed in the series, and while it's certainly watchable, I wouldn't say it's a necessary Star Wars viewing. 11. Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. Easily the worst live action Star Wars flick to release. But it's not terrible. Once again, solely saved by Ian McDiarmid as Palpatine and his role in things, Ewan McGregor and Obi-Wan's place in the story, and the final battle. Other than that, the majority of the dialogue is just pure cringe. The chemistry between Christensen and Portman is non-existent, the visuals look cartoonish, and overall it's just far too long and drawn out for its own good. It certainly has its enjoyable moments, but overall, it's a dud. 10. Episode 1, The Phantom Menace this movie suffers from what I like to call a tonal identity crisis. It can't decide if it wants to be a serious political thriller or a goofy outlandish kids movie. It's at its absolute best when following Palpatine's genius manipulation of the Senate in order to put himself into a position of power, and at its worst for most of the rest of the time. From Jar Jar to its horrid offbeat slapstick comedy and often cringy dialogue. Though I must say, Neeson, McGregor, and McDiarmid all give exquisite performances, and the Duel of the Fates is perhaps the best lightsaber battle of them all, and Darth Maul is a total badass. 9. Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker. Way to botch what could have been a superb finale. Return was an epic conclusion, Revenge arguably saved the prequels, but this one is by far the worst of the sequel trilogy. It was a rushed mix and match of various ideas crammed into one far too short lackluster finish. Between trying to be a sequel to The Force Awakens, retconning things people didn't like about The Last Jedi, wrapping up this trilogy, and the entire Skywalker saga was clearly far too much for this team to handle. It has some saving grace moments that make it worth watching, but overall it's ultimately disappointing. 8. Solo A Star Wars Story a severely underrated Star Wars flick. It received middling reviews upon release and essentially bombed at the box office, but in the years that have passed since it first released, it seems that people are finally coming around to it. The story isn't overly exciting and the stakes don't necessarily feel real and the color palette is beyond bland. But also in the mix is some truly fun action set pieces, thrilling Star Wars moments, fantastic performances across the board, especially from Alden Ehrenreich as well as Donald Glover, as younger versions of Han and Lando respectively, and overall I'd say this is the most digestible and just plain enjoyable Star Wars flick. It's sort of in a league of its own when it comes to this franchise. 7. Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. What was once my favorite of the series has seen a steady decline over the years, but that doesn't by any means make it not a great movie. 
It manages to both perfectly encapsulate everything you loved about its two predecessors while also offering up an almost overwhelmingly satisfying conclusion. It has its big epic moments, its darker moments, its memorable moments, but also plenty of childish and cheesy moments. That's where my issues lie with this original trilogy finale. It went for a far more light-hearted space romp over the darker and bolder galaxy found within Empire. While it still has its more mature moments like the whole final confrontation between Luke Vader and the Emperor, it tries almost too hard at points to be far too kid-friendly. Star Wars was always meant to be a franchise with mainly children as the target audience, but after Empire, this felt like a half-step in almost the wrong direction. Luckily though, it found a mostly healthy balance. 6. Episode 8, The Last Jedi Ah yes, now we've landed on the most divisive Star Wars movie, in fact, quite possibly the most divisive and controversial movie to ever be released. I don't want to dive too deep into the controversy, as that could be a whole string of videos all on its own. All I'll say is it's easily the best looking Star Wars movie. It's gorgeous, and I truthfully admire the bold decisions director Ryan Johnson made. Regardless of your thoughts on them, I admire the man for being brave enough to take these risks and step outside of the pre-established Star Wars formula. It's a grand story with a lot of moving parts. It works for the most part, but there are certainly plot lines and moments that sadly fall oh so flat. The performances all around are arguably the best of the entire franchise, the throne room scene and Hollow's maneuver are some of the greatest moments in Star Wars, and the overall message the film delivers is spectacular. 5. Episode 4, A New Hope The one that started it all, way back in 77. Little did Lucas and company know what they were getting themselves into. Look, the film is certainly dated, like, very dated, and the added effects by Lucas with the special editions make things worse. That being said, the lovable characters, iconic moments, and wonderful storytelling and sense of adventure are still very present. Despite showing its age the most out of any of the movies, it still holds up incredibly well, and is the sturdiest base imaginable for this globally recognized mega franchise. 4. Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith The savior of the prequel trilogy has arrived. A gripping tale of love, loss, and of course, revenge. This finality to the prequel trilogy that shows Anakin's final descent into darkness as he ultimately becomes Darth Vader has some of the biggest, most memorable, and quotable moments of the entire franchise. Ewan McGregor and Ian McDiarmid give top-tier performances as expected, the action is bigger than ever, the story is darker and at its utmost captivating, the visuals hold up extremely well, and the emotions are running at their highest, especially during the Battle of the Heroes which is right up there with Duel of the Fates as both John Williams' best work and the best lightsaber battle. The journey to this point may have been a bit rocky, but the payoff far exceeded the expectations of every Star Wars fan, giving us an extraordinary final chapter in Anakin Skywalker's story. Whoa, 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 hold on there for just a quick second, young Padawan. If you're enjoying the video, don't get stuck on that 91% who are currently watching and not subscribe to my channel. Be sure to hit that subscribe button right now in order to find more content just like this. Plus, it would be a huge help to me and I would greatly appreciate it. Not to mention it would give me... And while you're at it, don't forget to ring that little bell icon, that way you can be notified about all of my latest uploads. And now, back to the video. 3. Episode 7, The Force Awakens After a 10 year absence, Star Wars finally came back to theaters with the biggest bang possible. A beautiful blend of new and old, with a familiar story and a brave new vision, introducing us to a new set of magnificent characters like Rey, Finn, Poe, and the villainous Kylo Ren, while also bringing back the series' most iconic characters like Han, Leia, and Chewie. This movie is a spectacle to behold. The action is grand, the visuals are top-notch, and the stakes are immensely high. The fandom collectively cried tears of joy when the credits finally rolled and we all knew Star Wars was back. Number 2. Rogue One, A Star Wars Story Yeah, yeah, I know. A lot of you are going to disagree with me here, but to quickly summarize my thoughts, to me, this was the first movie where I truly saw the wars part in Star Wars. Seeing the impact the Empire has had on the countless planets they occupy, it was eerily reminiscent of real-world war times. And that's what I love about it. You have to remember that not all planets joined the Empire peacefully. The Empire are the bad guys, and their true hostility is on full display here. 
You only spend a short amount of time with these characters, but they left such an impact in such a short period of time. The action is at its most gritty, realistic, and ultimately best. The visuals are purely stunning, and although you already know the outcome, the stakes do feel genuinely real, leading to some incredibly intense moments. And to top it all off, you have that Darth Vader scene. Oh, baby. And number one, of course, had to be... Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back. A sequel that surpassed its original in every conceivable way. In terms of scope, scale, size, stature, you name it, it went bigger and better than the first. But also much darker in tone. A sequel that truly changed things up and for the better. The action is grander, the story is far more compelling, the visuals hold up better than the first, the characters you had already fallen for have now undeniably cemented themselves in the film history, and it has what is likely the greatest plot twist of all time. It took me a little while to come around to this one. I always felt as though I couldn't understand why it was so loved, but over time, I too came to love it, and that is why, after all this time, over 40 years to be exact, it is still the best Star Wars movie. So that is all for today's video folks, be sure to let me know down in the comments if you agree or disagree with my ranking, and feel free to let me know what you'd like to see for my next ranking video. If you enjoyed that video be sure to hit that thumbs up button, and if you'd like to see more content consider subscribing to my channel and ringing that little bell icon that way you can be notified about all of my latest uploads. And as always, stay safe, thank you so much for watching, and that's a wrap. Hey you, yeah you, if you made it this far, just know I appreciate you, and while you're here, consider hitting that subscribe button.